Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> okay, welcome to the ArtFest online chat. We're doing an artist interview today with uh, Lindsay Franks from LAF uh, Pottery Productions. And uh, welcome to ArtFest. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so, pottery is one of my passions. I love pottery. I collect pottery. I just, you know, I can have my whole house filled with pottery. I just love it. And I'm sure a lot of our, <laughs> our listeners help. It would be hard for them to, I can't imagine they wouldn't have one piece of pottery in their, in their houses right now. But I was wondering, you know, what is, I get this question a lot, what is the difference between ceramics and pottery? Are they the same thing? Um, going back to the definition of the words, they are very much the same thing. But I think the main difference is that there's a huge kind of controversy whether, you know, you know, ceramics and pottery, whether you're classified as an artist or not. And so that was one of the, probably the biggest debate questions that I had in college was, are we like crafters? Are we makers? Or are we like artists? And I think the difference from potters to ceramicists is whether you're, you know, just mass making a bunch of mugs or bowls or everything, or whether you're actually like taking the time to sit down and create something that's individual. So I think like for me, that's the main difference. I, I'm somewhere in the middle of sometimes some of my stuff merges into ceramics and sometimes some of my stuff merges into I... I work with my hands, that's it. I can't draw to save my life, <laughs> sort of thing. So for me, that's the main difference, at least. Yeah. Okay, well, is, it, is our ceramics, um, like I think what ceramics, that they're, are they hand painted more or are they, do they use gla glazes as well? Like as pottery uses gla glazes. I feel like, well, I mean, in, in <laughs> at the end of the day, everything, you know, clay wise uses glazes because that's the only thing that'll make it through the, uh, <laughs> that'll make it through the kiln. But I, I think because um, some potters hand decorate to until the sun comes, sun comes down and, and they're still create, you know, technically classified as potters. But I guess it's really just up to like, I think it's more of a personality, like, like who you are and how that translates through your, through your craftsmanship. Like whether you actually like take the time to like sit down and draw and think and then you go, okay. I'm an, I'm an artist, I'm a ceramicist, I'm doing the whole thing versus a potter who's very much like, yep, I, this is functional, you know? So I like, to, I like to try, like personally, I like to try and sit in the middle of, this is functional, but it's also art. So that's, that's how I like to. Okay. Good explanation. <laughs> yeah. Good explanation. So um, you've got, I've noticed you have, you have a lot of really interesting uh, vessel shapes. Thank you. <laughs> And I was wondering, um, which ones are the most challenging to make and which ones are your favorites, favorite ones to do, to create? Um, it really depends on the day. I think the hardest things for me to make is prob, I don't know, that's such a good question. Probably something where I have to like have a lot of attachments is really difficult for me because my studio fluctuates between like really humid and then really dry. So I have to like really be careful with stuff like that. Probably my most difficult things that I have to make are my teapots. They're they're sitting back there. Um, I can hear. Let me grab one. <laughs> um, they're they're probably the trickier things that I like to make, but um, because it's a lot of attachments and it's a lot of thinking through the process. And <laughs> so this isn't finished yet, but this is one of my teapots, oh, inspired cool. by um, one of my. Uh, college instructors, uh, Jessica Stein, I believe is her last name, and she made teapots like that all the time, and I was like, I want to go and do that, so that's probably one of the hardest things for me to make, because it's a lot of attachments, and probably one of my favorite things to make are just, it's weird, because if I'm in one of those head spaces where it's like, I just need to be brainless and just fire out a bunch of stuff, then it's mugs, and I just sit down, and I turn on a YouTube video, and I just make, like, 30 mugs, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm happy, and then sometimes it's, I'm just gonna, you know, take a bunch of clay, and throw it on the wheel, and do whatever, whatever comes, comes next, but it's just all about, like, <laughs> where I am mentally, like, do I have the mental capacity to expand my creativity throughout my entire studio, or do I need to bundle it down to just you need repetition. So it's, I, I don't know. I love it. I'm very lucky. I love making, I love almost every part of this. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, it's, you know, working on the wheel is very physical, isn't it? I mean, I, is it, did you, what happened when you first started? Did you find it really hard and, or did you, is it, it's it, it, it take a lot of muscle power to, 
to, to yeah it's actually it's a lot of core and shoulder strength it's a lot of upper body and wedging out clay and and because it's basically force like it's it, it's physics when you think about it some people are like you know go with your emotions you know listen to the clay listen to what it's telling you and meanwhile some other instructors or teachers will tell you this is just straight up physics <laughs> you know it's going that way you want to push that way have fun. like it's attached have at it you know but it's certainly, it, oh my God, it is so much more muscle than you think. Like one box of clay is 50 pounds, just under 50 pounds. So, and I have 11 of those in my, in my closet that I keep <laughs> stored up. So just pretty much every part of this is lugging and moving and, and lifting and pushing and everything. And so I think when I first started, I only stuck with like one pound ball of clay, which was, which, you know, it's like, it's a pound. It doesn't matter. And then I think I got through about like five balls of clay and I was like, I can't feel my hands. My elbows have gone numb. That's it. I can't feel anything. I have to go home and sleep. But now, now I can, I can sit through coffee pushes me through. It is my life, life force. But <laughs> now it's, it's, you definitely notice, like, I think from when I first started to now my shoulders are definitely wider <laughs> from muscle that I've, that I've slowly built up. But it's a lot, it's a lot more, you know, what like basically a workout every time I come in here depending on what I'm making which is <laughs> sometimes stressful because it's like oh god my shoulder's killing me and it's like I gotta work too bad you know <laughs> so yeah I, I, yeah I can uh I imagine I, I always wondered about that because it looks so relaxing and easy but it's not <laughs> it's very demanding but you have, you have to yeah. have control right for when you're actually working on the wheel I mean, yeah you have like I you know, I have to really, like, how do you learn that? I guess it's just practice. Lots of practice. It was weird. For me, when I started, centering was not my problem. And I think I started out at, um, uh, what's it called? Glaze Craze. <laughs> I can't remember where it is. But this, this really nice lady, she had four little uh, Shimpo VL whispers in a, like, broom closet. And she had four of them. <laughs> and she was, like, and she had, like, a bunch, she had, like, a party of toddlers and it was only her because her one employee quit. So when I went in and I was like, I want to learn how to do pottery when I was like 16. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm only 16, but there are a bunch of three-year-olds all like smashing and breaking <laughs> stuff. So she came in and she sat down and she was like, okay, uh, here you go. And showed me how to make a bowl. She gave me a five minute uh, instruction, basically like tutorial. And then I sat down and I, I don't know, I think I just like managed to like figure it out in my brain and I was like, okay, this hand goes forward, this hand goes down, let's do it. And I managed to center it relatively well within the first five minutes. So I think I was kind of made to do this because like, I, because yeah, right. she came back in afterwards and, um, and she was like, is that your like, what, like fifth ball of clay? And I was like, no, this is my first. What are you talking about? And she was like, um, okay, I need to talk to your mother. And so she went off and she had a conversation with my mom and was like, hi, your daughter is, like, naturally talented at this. Like, this is something that she needs to, like, you know, maybe look into a little bit further. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> cool. That's so. great. Yeah, it was nice to find that. I mean, and, and you are young. You started young, and you're, you've launched your uh, business, and you're learning everything. Like, so what have you uh, found that you – uh, as far as running your business, starting your business, what's your challenges been and what is it that you love about having a business and, and being in the art and craft world, selling your work now? I think probably one of the hardest things is, is self-motivation, is just, you know, getting up and coming downstairs. And the other thing is, I can't escape this. Like other people are like, oh, I'm going to call a sick day oh, the traffic's too bad, I'm going to be late. For me, it's like, yeah, there was traffic on the stairs on the way, you know, down to my studio. I don't think I can make it into work. And it's like, okay, just, you know, don't. Like, there is no escape from it, and and which is awesome because I love it. But at some days when I'm just like, I can't handle this. <laughs> I need to leave. I, you know, I go storming out. And, I'm, and my mom's like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> and I'm like, I can't handle this. I just gotta, I'm gonna smash something that's really important. And she was like, okay, then you go for a walk with the dog and have a good day. Uh, so I think self-motivation and also trying to get some of your friends around you to understand that what you do is still classified as work, even though you answer to yourself. That's yeah, probably one of the right. hardest things. But I think one of my favorite parts is being able to do craft shows. I love craft shows, man. Like they're my favorite thing, getting to like 
go out and explain like my process and being able to see the reactions of people to things that I've made. Cause for me, <laughs> I'm like, mom, look at what I made. And she's like, that's awesome. And you know, she's mom. So she's meant to do that, but it, it only makes it, I think it's, it's a little bit of like a reassurance that it's like, Hey, what you're doing is, is good. And you're okay with this is getting out and like meeting people and being like, Hey, I'm a craft person. What do you do? And they're like, me too. <laughs> Where's your booth? Oh, I'm over here. Do you want, do you want to trade something? Like just the whole dynamic of it is like a little community. It's awesome. That's probably my favorite part about it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. That's why I love water fest too. The festivals are just so much fun. And I, yeah. and I, uh, and you're, you're new for new, a new exhibitor at our fest and we're <laughs> to our first you know, show this year, which of course ended up being a virtual show. And uh, so we haven't, <laughs> haven't had a physical show yet. I'm uh, looking forward to that happening soon. Yeah, because yeah. I know the, you know, the craft show world is, is uh, fun. I mean, you work, with, you know, when you, as an artist, you work so much on your own and you're, do you have a lot of solitaire, a lot of solitude and it can be challenging for sure. But when, you, when you're at a show, you're at a show, you're performing, you're visiting, you're having that whole other side of it, which I think is very important for all of our, our stability. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Get, the hell, right? to get out of the public. I get it for sure. Yeah, yeah, so, um, and you're, you're about to uh, come on to the, the new Art Fest uh, online shop as well, which we're really excited about that, and that's new for us, and looking yeah. forward to having you in our, in our, in our shop. So, what, yeah, so what's, uh, what's your goals right now for uh, the rest of the year? For your, um, your, uh, well, before I found out that I was doing Art Fest, especially online, my goal was to get my online shop set up, and then I called you, and I was like, hey, did I get in? And you were like, yeah, you're in, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Cool. So it, thanks to you, my online shop is now going to be live uh, the same day as the, as the show goes live. And um, just, I think goals right now is just, you know, selling online, building social media following, just uh, trying to experiment with different glazes. I have my, <laughs> I'm very comfortable with my four different colors of glazes that do interesting things in the kiln. So nothing really like looks the same, but just trying to push the boundaries of what I can do and I'm in the works of trying to make, because I'm a musician, I thought I was going to go to college for, for uh, music, I was going to be a drummer, <laughs> and then, uh, and I just decided, like, last minute, I was like, I'm going off to Halliburton to go and become a potter, <laughs> see you later, <laughs> um, but I'm actually trying to incorporate some music into what I, what I work with, so that's probably what's happening in this year, like, the rest of this year, and stuff like that. Well, that's so. interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you come up with that? It's, it's a little bit of a secret right now because if I, because okay. not a lot of people are, are doing it and I've done a lot of research about it. So it's, it's more of a, it's more of a, as soon as I can figure it out and I tell the world and that's how it works. <laughs> All right. Well, stay tuned folks. Cause we'll hear it first on art fest here. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> yeah. This is actually pro probably like my first time, like talking about it with, a, you know, with the public forum about, about it. So yeah, you guys get the exclusive. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so with one more question about we talk about glazes, like you had four different glazes. Tell me a little bit about glazes so we so our audience can understand about what's involved because pottery is many, many steps. And I don't think maybe people don't really, really understand how complex it really is to, to get it all to look the way you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glazes, it's, it's really weird. So glazes are, are made up of a couple different, it's basically like glass with a couple other, other things with it. And I was terrible at chemistry in high school. So when I got to college, I was like, I don't think I'm going to pass the section of it, but I, I ended up figuring it out. But glazes are, are made up of, of, you know, emulsifiers, you know, silica, a bunch of other things. Um, and it's weird because you never really know how they're going to turn out. And people have been working on glaze recipes for, you know, their entire lives. They're like, <laughs> I want it to be blue when it starts out. And then it's going to transition into like green and, and whatever you want to do, like the, the combinations are endless. And sometimes your mistakes can come out looking like some of the best stuff that you've ever made. But it's also can be super confusing to everybody else because like right here, I'm in the middle of glazing this. It looks red now, but once it's fired, it's going to be blue. <laughs> so in the process of it going into the kiln after it's fired, after it's dipped, you know, once it gets hot enough in the kiln the glaze be basically boils and then it solidifies itself with the actual pottery which is why it's so strong and it doesn't just flake off and which is why if you know if you break like one of your ceramic mugs everything breaks instead of it the glaze just chipping off and 
and stuff like that. But it's definitely, it's, <laughs> it's probably the trickiest thing. I'm really lucky. My best friend is extraordinarily smart with blazes and I am not the brightest with them. So I, we have a deal that once we kind of both get going a little more, a little bit more, she's going to make all my glazes and I'm going to make the pieces for her to test them out on. <laughs> so yeah. it's glazing is so complicated and it just, you never know what it's going to do. And there can be so many problems if you miss one step. And that's the whole thing about it. You can have, and that's the thing with pottery, is that during almost every step of the process, something could break. <laughs> you know, when you make it, it could fall apart. It can explode in the kiln. It could, like, you can drop it. It could just, like, you're holding it, and it just, like, tink, and then it explodes in your hands. And you're like, oh, okay, uh, time to move on. Because, like, you don't really have a lot of time to just sit there and, and think about, like, you know, <laughs> like oh this broke I'm gonna cry about it for half an hour it's like you don't have time to cry you have 27 <laughs> other things that you have to glaze you know <laughs> so I mean that's the whole thing and glazing can definitely be your downfall if you can't figure it out and I was lucky enough I am and I'm still lucky to live close enough to Tucker's Pottery Supply uh, which basically and they have glazes that are already figured out so I basically just taken their glaze recipes and they mix it up so it's all safe and it's all, all okay. So if anything goes wrong with it, it's basically my fault, <laughs> which is fine with me. <laughs> as long as you give me a strong, strong starting point, I'm fine with that. And so, I mean, you know, you're just kind of like, okay, I know this is going to be this color, but I'm going to layer it with this color. And then you do layer it and then it comes out and the first time you've actually layered them and you see it out of the kiln, you're like, why is this blue? This was supposed to be red. I don't understand. What did I do? And then you have to try and go back and think, what did I dip it in? What's in there? Was it the iron? Was it the cobalt? So uh, glazing is difficult by any means. And I think that's probably the best thing that you can say to anybody who's trying pottery is like, you can make it through all the other steps. If you can glaze it right, you're fine. <laughs> it could be probably the ugliest looking form that you've ever seen on the face of the earth, but glaze could fix it and you can sell it for a million dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the easiest way to explain glaze to you. <laughs> yeah, challenging for sure. It's like almost like being in, working in with invisible paint because you never know what you're gonna get. I can't imagine like I'm a painter, so if I exactly it, kept changing every day, I go out like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walk in, you painted a swan. Yeah. Exactly, like you walk in, you painted a swan, you go back in the next day. That is a rhino. Okay, I don't understand what <laughs> happened, but. <laughs> <laughs> we got at point A, we got to point B, and now we're at point, like, F. And you're like, what? How did I get there? <laughs> I don't understand. I must be a, do you have to document all your steps so you can sort of backtrack? Or do you have time for that even when you're doing your process? Sometimes, if I, if I have a lot of time before a show, then I'll, I'll definitely, that's, <laughs> that's definitely something that I'll do. But if, if I'm, like, which tends to happen where I'm rushing before a show, then it's more so... I tend to like, I'm, I'm weird. And my, my mentor who fires all my stuff for me, cause I don't have a kiln. Um, he, uh, he looks at me and he goes, why, why do you glaze everything? So like messily and like, why is this a mess? I don't understand what's happening. And then when it comes out, I'm like, look, it looks like a person. That was an accident, but it's awesome. And I, I think that's my glazing technique is just letting the glaze kind of speak for itself. Like I just dip it in and I do my own thing and that's it. Like I, I think people think I'm a messy glazer, but in reality, I, it has an entire, like, energy and, and personality in itself that by the end of it, and I think that's kind of my style that I'm, that I'm slowly learning. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a style until someone looked at me at a craft show and was like, I love that you just let the glaze do its thing, and I was like, that is what I'm doing. I finally have a name to this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, more spontaneous, for sure. Yeah, I think it definitely, and I think it matches my personality a little bit. <laughs> Just, what is she doing now? I don't know, you know. <laughs> well, at least lots of room for experimentation and discovery, so that's what I like to think about that. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, so thank you, Lindsay, for coming on and chatting with us and, and sharing uh, what you're up to, and, uh, and looking forward to many shows together and having you on the Art Bus Shop, and it was a delight yeah. nice to meet you, and and hear about uh, all about your pottery and your as a new artist in the in the art and craft show world. And you're doing amazing stuff, and I love what you're up to. So, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for having me. I love doing this. Okay, it's great. So, um, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Yep, talk to you in a little bit. Bye. Like me too. <laughs>
where's your booth? Oh, I'm over here. Do you want, do you want to trade something? Like just the whole dynamic of it is like a little community. It's awesome. That's probably my favorite part about it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's why I love Water Fest too. The festivals are just so much fun. And I, yeah. and, uh, and you're, you're new for new, a new exhibitor at our fest. And we're <laughs> to our first you know, show this year, which of course ended up being a virtual show. And uh, so we haven't, <laughs> haven't had a physical show yet. <laughs> I'm uh, looking forward to that happening soon. Yeah, because yeah. I know the you know the craft show world is is uh, fun. I mean, you work with, you know when you, as an artist you work so much on your own, and you're do you have a lot of solitaire, a lot, lot of solitude, and it can be challenging for sure. But when you when you're at a show, you're at a show, you're performing, you're visiting, you're having that whole other side of it, which I think is very important for all of our our stability <laughs> yeah <laughs> get, out, right? get out of the public i get it for sure yeah, yeah. so um and you're you're about to uh, come on to the, the new art fest uh, online shop as well which we're really excited about that and that's new for us and looking yeah. forward to you having you in our in our in our shop so what yeah so what's uh what's your goals right now for uh, the rest of the year um uh, well before i found out that i was doing art fest especially online my goal was to get my online shop set up and then i called you and i was like hey did i get in and you're like yeah you're in and i was like oh okay <laughs> cool so it, thanks to you my online shop is now going to be live uh the same day as the as the show goes live and um just I think goals right now is just, you know, selling online, building social media following, just uh, trying to experiment with different glazes. I have my, <laughs> I'm very comfortable with my four different colors of glazes that do interesting things in the kiln. So nothing really like looks the same, but just trying to push the boundaries of what I can do. And I'm in the works of trying to make, cause I'm a musician. I thought I was going to go to college for, for uh, music. I was going to be a drummer. <laughs> And then, uh, and I just decided like last minute, I was like, I'm going off to Halliburton to go and become a potter. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> um, but I'm actually trying to incorporate some music into what I, what I work with. So that's probably what's happening in this year, like the rest of this year and stuff like that. Well, that's so, interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a secret right now. Cause if I, cause okay. not a lot of people are, are doing it and I've done a lot of research about it. So it's, it's more of a, it's more of a, as soon as I can figure it out and I tell the world and that's how it works. <laughs> All right. Well, stay tuned folks. Cause we'll hear it first on art fest here. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> yeah. This is actually pro probably like my first time, like talking about it with, a, you know, with the public forum about, about it. So yeah, you guys get the exclusive. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so with one more question about we talk about glazes, like you had four different glazes. Tell me a little bit about glazes so we so our audience can understand about what's involved because pottery is many, many steps. And I don't think maybe people don't really, really understand how complex it really is to, to get it all to look the way you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glazes, it's, it's really weird. So glazes are, are made up of a couple different, it's basically like glass with a couple other, other things with it. And I was terrible at chemistry in high school. So when I got to college, I was like, I don't think I'm going to pass the section of it, but I, I ended up figuring it out. But glazes are, are made up of, of, you know, emulsifiers, you know, silica, a bunch of other things. Um, and it's weird because you never really know how they're going to turn out. And people have been working on glaze recipes for, you know, their entire lives. They're like, <laughs> I want it to be blue when it starts out. And then it's going to transition into like green and and whatever you want to do like the the combinations are endless and sometimes your mistakes can come out looking like some of the best stuff that you've ever made but it's also can be super confusing to everybody else because like right here i'm in the middle of glazing this it looks red now but once it's fired it's going to be blue <laughs> so in the process of it going into the kiln after it's fired after it's dipped you know once it gets hot enough in the kiln the glaze be basically boils and then it solidifies itself with the actual pottery which is why it's so strong and it doesn't just flake off and which is why if you know if you break like one of your ceramic mugs everything breaks instead of it the glaze just chipping off and and stuff like that but it's definitely it's <laughs> it's probably the trickiest thing I'm really lucky. My best friend is extraordinarily smart with glazes and I am not the brightest with them. So I, we have a deal that once we kind of both get going a little more, a little bit more, she's going to make all my glazes and I'm going to make the pieces for her to test them out on. <laughs> so yeah. 
it's glazing is so complicated and it just you never know what it's going to do and there can be so many problems if you miss one step and that's the whole thing about it you can have and that's the thing with pottery is that during almost every step of the process something could break <laughs> you know when you make it it could fall apart it can explode in the kiln it could like you can drop it it could just like you're holding it and it just like tink and then it explodes in your hands and you're like oh okay uh time to move on because like you don't really have a lot of time to just sit there and and think about like you know <laughs> like oh this broke I'm gonna cry about it for half an hour it's like you don't have time to cry you have 27 <laughs> other things that you have to glaze you know <laughs> so I mean, that's the whole thing. And glazing can definitely be your downfall if you can't figure it out. And I was lucky enough. I am, and I'm still lucky to live close enough to Tucker's Pottery Supply, uh, which basically, and they have glazes that are already figured out. So I basically just taken their glaze recipes and they mix it up so it's all safe and it's all, all okay. So if anything goes wrong with it, it's basically my fault, <laughs> which is fine with me. <laughs> As long as you give me a strong, strong starting point, I'm fine with that. And so, I mean, you know, you're just kind of like, okay, I know this is going to be this color, but I'm going to layer it with this color. And then you do layer it. And then it comes out. And the first time you've actually layered them and you see it out of the kiln, you're like, why is this blue? This was supposed to be red. I don't understand. What did I do? And then you have to try and go back and think, what did I dip it in? What's in there? Was it the iron? Was it the cobalt? So uh, glazing is difficult by any means and I think that's probably the best thing that you can say to anybody who's trying pottery is like you can make it through all the other steps if you can glaze it right you're fine <laughs> it could be probably the ugliest looking form that you've ever seen on the face of the earth but glaze could fix it and you can sell it for a million dollars so <laughs> yeah, that's that's the easiest way to explain glaze to you <laughs> yeah challenging for sure it's like almost like being in, working in with invisible paint because you never know what you're going to get I can't imagine like I'm a painter, so if I exactly paint, I kept changing every day, I go out like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walk in, you painted a swan. Exactly, like you walk in, you painted a swan, you go back in the next day. That is a rhino. Okay, I don't understand what happened, <laughs> but <laughs> we got at point A, we got to point B, and now we're at point like F, and you're like, what? How did I get there? <laughs> I don't understand. I must be a. Do you have to document all your steps so you can sort of backtrack or do you have time for that even when you're doing your process sometimes if i if i have a lot of time before a show then i'll i'll definitely that's <laughs> that's definitely something that i'll do but if if i'm like which tends to happen where i'm rushing before a show then it's more so i tend to like i'm i'm weird and my my mentor who fires all my stuff for me because i don't have a kiln um he uh he looks at me and he goes why, why do you glaze everything so like messily? And like, why is this a mess? I don't understand what's happening. And then when it comes out, I'm like, look, it looks like a person. That was an accident, but it's awesome. And I, I think that's my glazing technique is just letting the glaze kind of speak for itself. Like I just dip it in and I do my own thing and that's it. Like I, I think people think I'm a messy glazer, but in reality, I, it has an entire like energy and, and personality in itself that by the end of it. And I think that's kind of my style that I'm, that I'm slowly learning. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a style until someone looked at me at a craft show and was like, I love that you just let the glaze do its thing. And I was like, that is what I'm doing. I finally have a name to this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, more spontaneous for sure. Yeah, I think it definitely, and I think it matches my personality a little bit. <laughs> just what is she doing now? I don't know. Sure. You know? <laughs> Well, at least lots of room for experimentation and discovery. So that's what I like to think about that. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So thank you, Lindsay, for coming on and chatting with us and, and sharing uh, what you're up to. And, uh, and looking forward to many shows together and having you on the Art Bus shop. And it was a delight yeah. like to meet you and, and hear about uh, all about your pottery and your as a new artist in the, in the art and craft show world. And you're doing amazing stuff and I love what you're up to. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. I love doing this. Okay, that's great. So um, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Yep, talk to you in a little bit. Bye.